There's a passage when the Buddha asks, what is one? And the answer is, all beings are maintained by food. Well, it turns out there's another answer. All beings are maintained by fabrication. The fact that we exist depends on fabrication. We're taking the raw material of our past fabrications, or the results of our past fabrications, and we're fabricating them into the present moment. In doing so, we provide raw material for the future, each moment. We're constantly moving on, moving on. But the problem is we're often blind as to where we're going. All fabrication is done with the purpose of something, for the purpose of something, which means we have something in mind. Even animals with minimal brains have something in mind as they act. Think of the sea squirts. When they're born, they're looking for a place to stay permanently, so they have a little brain that moves them around directs them, chooses a spot, they settle in, and then they digest their brain because they feel there's nothing else they have to think about. They just feed from that point on. In other words, the fabrication there gets pretty minimal, just feeding without anything else in mind. But we can see that's a very limited idea of happiness, a limited idea of well-being. Well, the Buddha looks at us and sees us as sea squirts. We have very limited ideas about what happiness can be, what's available to us, what's possible. And we content ourselves with things that are not really worth being content with. Oftentimes we're headed in places we have no idea where we're going. When the Buddha talks about different beings headed on the path to hell, headed on the path to the animal womb, headed on the path to the realm of the hungry ghosts, or human beings, or the heavens. A lot of those beings have no idea where they're going. Those in the path to hell don't think they're going to hell. Their picture of reality tells them something else. The same for those who are going to the Womb of the animals, the realm of the hungry ghosts. No one intends to become that kind of animal, that kind of being. But they've been fabricating in that direction, blindly, with an idea in mind about what's possible, what works. And so in the Buddha's teaching beings, He's not teaching people who are simply suddenly deciding they want to follow a path. They're already following paths. And his task as a teacher was to alert them as to what kind of path they were on and that better paths were available. This is why right view comes at the beginning of the path, why conviction in the Buddha's awakening comes as the first strength, the first faculty. He's giving us a picture to hold in mind, opening up possibilities for us to keep in mind as we keep fabricating. I was talking the other day to someone who was saying he came to the meditation, thinking that at the beginning he would just find his mind where it was, what, what was going on on its own, and then decide to fabricate a state of concentration. And it suddenly hit him that he was already fabricating something else. We're fabricating all the time. It's just that we do it blindly, or as the Buddha would say, without alertness. So we want to be alert to what we're doing. But even so, it depends on having a picture. And choosing whose picture we're going to take as our guide. As that philosopher said, we live forward but understand backward. 
Well, we're fabricating forward, fabricating forward. And often it's too late when we realize which direction we've been going. So we're fortunate to have the Buddha's teachings available. He gives us an idea of what's possible, what works in the world, how it works in the world. what kind of happiness we can attain through our fabrication. And it turns out we can arrive at something unfabricated. That's what makes this so special. Everything else in the world is fabricated. It's fabrications, creating more fabrications, creating more fabrications, and it just goes on and on and on without end. But he's telling us the unfabricated is possible. At that point, we don't have to be beings anymore. That's a little bit scary, because this unfabricated is going to require that we abandon a lot of things that we've been fabricating for in the past, things that we thought were good, things we thought were worthwhile. Which is why we have to keep reminding ourselves of what right view says. That our intentions really do matter. And that intentions can be developed to a level of skill that can take us all the way to the unfabricated. You want to keep that in mind. Otherwise, we get tied up in the affairs of the day. This person said that, that person said this, this person has it in for me, this person whatever. As the Buddha said, what other people do to you is not going to take you to hell. What you do, though, can take you to hell. You don't have to wait to, for hell at the end of this lifetime. Hell right now. And at the same time, it's getting in the way of what opportunities you do have to go to something better, search for something better. So remember, you're always fabricating. You are the product of fabrications. Your identity depends on the ones that you've latched onto. So ask yourself, if the Buddha saw you, which path would he see you on? And what would he tell you? So that your fabrications are not blind. So you can fabricate with some understanding. Now granted, we take a lot of the Buddhist teachings on faith. But that's the position of all beings. Everybody is acting on faith. I was reading a while back someone claiming that the beliefs of a scientific worldview are not like the beliefs of a religious worldview. The scientific worldview is, is true. It's been proven. But then again, I don't think of anybody who holds on to a belief without some sense that it's been proven, one way or another. And there's still so much, even in the scientific worldview, that we don't really know. We don't even know if the future is going to happen. Time could end at any point. There's so many things we take on trust. So the question is, who are you going to trust? Who's trustworthy? You look at the path that's being recommended. In a purely materialistic worldview, everything would depend on survival. And that's basically the road to hell when you say, well, survival is the highest goal that we can have. Because without the physical survival of the body, you can't do anything else. So that's the number one prerequisite. And oftentimes, to survive, people have to do some pretty nasty things. We see this all around us. Those are people on the road to maybe uh, 
rebirth in an animal womb or the hell? They don't know. You look at the Buddhist path, it's a path of dignity, it's a path of honesty. It's built on virtue. And that right there gives you, has a lot to recommend it. Of course, it's not proof. As the Buddha said, you don't really have proof of his, of his teachings until you've seen the deathless for the very first time. You're like the hunter in the forest looking for an elephant. You see likely signs, even in the practice of jhana, even in the psychic powers that can be attained through jhana. Those are just likely signs. The real proof comes when you get to the unconditioned, get to the unfabricated and realize it's true. It can be done. It can be attained. The fabrications that create you, the fabrications that you're creating all the time, can't cause the unfabricated, but they can get you to the threshold, and from the threshold you can go to it. That's when you know. And people who come back from that experience are people who are trustworthy. Again, we take this on faith, we take this on conviction. But it's a good faith, it's a good conviction. And it's a good for the sake of to keep in mind as we practice. Because as the Buddha warns us, a lot of the other for the sakes of that we can follow, that we can take as our guide as we keep fabricating ourselves, fabricating our experience, and then using those fabrications to fabricate more. We need a guide so that we're not totally blind as we head into the future. So choose your guide well. And when you have a guide like the Buddha, keep it in mind all the time. Because it's so easy to fall back into other paths, other ways of fabrication, because that's what we've been doing in the past. It comes e easily. But when you look at what you've fabricated so far and decide that it's not good enough, That's going to be up to you to fabricate with more skill. That's when you're on the right path.